Hello everyone, my name's Andrew Halley. I'm the convener of Australian panel of C4. Welcome to this year's annual report. Just as an introduction and a recap on the scope of study committee C4, uh, we cover off a range of topics, including power quality, electromagnetic compatibility and interference, insulation coordination, lightning, and power system dynamics and numerical analysis. Uh, in terms of power system dynamics, uh, as indicated on the figure, uh, we cover quite a broad spectrum of topics, ranging from those occurring in the microsecond and millisecond time frame, right through to phenomena that uh, basically span out to tens, hundreds uh, of seconds, uh, and even longer uh, in the case of some issues. It's continue, well, continues to be a busy space in study committee C4. Uh, we currently have 39 active working groups in progress. 16 of those are joint working groups being undertaken in collaboration with uh, other SIGRE study committees as well as SIRED and IEEE. At the moment, about one third of our working groups are related to the power system dynamics and numerical, numerical analysis uh, topic and uh, that's still being driven quite heavily by the uh, I suppose the energy transition that we're seeing uh, the change of technologies within our power system uh, and all the issues that go with that uh, we currently have two working group conveners from Australia uh, Back is looking after C456 uh, and Jason is looking after a new working group which has only just kicked off uh, C465, which is specification, validation, and application of harmonic models and inverter-based resources. In terms of some of the newer working groups that have uh, started recently, uh, I'd highlight the, the, the following two, in addition to uh, the, the ones just mentioned. Uh, these will have relevance for the Australian power industry going forward. Uh, that is working group C463, harmonic power quality standards and compliance verification, a comparative assessment and practical guide. That'll be quite a, a useful working group. And uh, immediately following C464, uh, application of real-time digital simulation in power systems. And uh, this is becoming more relevant as uh, more network service providers and certainly AEMO uh, begin to explore the, the possibilities and uh, the, the benefits of uh, real-time simulation uh, for, for studying uh, the power system. In terms of publication, since the last uh, get-together that we had uh, back in November of last year, uh, there's been three technical brochures published from C4. Uh, I won't bother going through and reading the, uh, the names out there. You can look at the slides at your leisure uh, later. Um, but I suppose it's worth mentioning that there's a, a, quite a backlog, uh, to be honest, of working groups that are still expecting to publish soon, but have been negatively affected by COVID. Um, so the submissions are currently pending from uh, all of those working groups shown there. Uh, the titles and topics uh, for those working groups you can find in the C4 annual report, uh, which will be published um, in well but certainly before Christmas. In addition to the technical brochures, Study Committee C4 continues to be active in uh, publishing material in the SIGRE Science and Engineering Journal as well as Electra. Uh, in recent times uh, there's been a number of papers uh, or articles that have been published with, uh, with an Australian focus. Uh, volumes 20 and 21 of uh, the CSE uh, contain a number of these. Uh, some examples, uh, the first is developing dynamic load models for the Australian national electricity market with a focus on distributed energy resources. So this is essentially how to start modeling things like photovoltaics and you know, rooftop solar, how to take that those into account as part of our system simulations. Uh, the second one was uh, practical experience with mitigation of subsynchronous control interaction in power systems with low system strength. Uh, so Sachin Goyle from PowerLink was a, uh, a significant contributor to that particular article and uh, it, it's certainly well worth a read. On the topic of system strength, it seems to be the, the gift that gives on giving this one. 
um, there was an Electra reference paper uh, published uh, off the back of volume 20 of CSE, uh, simply titled System Strength. Uh, this was produced by Babak Badzara uh, and Zia Amin. Uh, Zia is our study committee chairman for C4. And um, that was largely summarising the work that was done uh, for the uh, Paris session last year, as well as the uh, Australian webinar, webinar that was run in the, in the November. So uh, look out for those. In terms of other mediums, uh, study committee C4 is uh, uh, continuing with its production of webinars. Uh, they're proving very popular and uh, easy to access. Uh, a good example of the, the level of interest that's been shown in them. Uh, there was the webinar held on 10th of December last year, uh, titled Impact of High Penetration of Inverter-Based Generation on System Inertia of Networks. This was uh, a webinar produced by Joint Working Group C2-C441, uh, of which Nilesh Modi from AEMO is our C4 rep. Uh, that attracted 580 registered participants and, and ended up with some 329 uh, online attendees, which uh, to the best of our knowledge is, uh, is a record for uh, a C4 uh, webinar. So great to see and uh, certainly a, a fantastic and very interesting topic. Uh, the other, other C4 webinar that's been run in the last uh, or in recent times uh, was titled New Aspects and Guides to Procedures for Estimating Lightning Performance of Transmission Lines. Uh, that was run on July 22nd of, of this year. And from what I understand, it was uh, well attended and um, uh, of, of interest to a number of people. So that's, that's really good. On the topic of green books, C4 has commenced a new green book. Um, to be titled Power System Dynamic Modeling and Analysis in Evolving Networks uh, it, with a release date of 2023. Uh, the lead authors for this green book are Babak and uh, Zia. Um, and there's a number of uh, contributors that have uh, put their hands up from Australia, including uh, myself, uh, Nilesh and, uh, and Sachin. So uh, we'll be working steadily through uh, 2022 to um, develop and uh, produce the, the draft inputs to that uh, particular document uh, with the subsequent review and publication thereafter. So um, yeah, look out for that one. The Paris virtual session this year, uh, there was a number of contributions from Australia. Uh, so the first was uh, a C4 workshop that was run on the, on the Monday, 23rd of August. Uh, it was titled EMT Analysis for Large-Scale System Impact Studies in Power Systems Having a High Penetration of Inverter Connected Generation. Uh, so this was coordinated by Babak as convener of Working Group C456. The, uh, that was followed soon after on the Tuesday and Wednesday by the C4 General Discussion Meeting, at which it was great to see a number of uh, Australian contribu contributions uh, some prepared and, and some just presented verbally uh, during the meeting, uh, covering a whole range of topics, uh, in, including those mentioned there. So uh, thanks to all those that were involved. Um, it was great to have that, uh, that Australian input. And uh, given the time zone and the, the, the time of night <laughs> rather than day uh, that we were involved, uh, it was good to see the, you know, I suppose, the level of interest in the numbers. So that was, that was really a really good outcome. For the next Paris session, we've had three papers accepted for presentation uh, covering preferential subjects one and three. Uh, I won't read each of the paper titles, uh, by all means have a, have a read later. And uh, if you'd like to uh, talk to any of the authors or provide any ideas, um, uh, either get in contact directly or if you haven't got contact details, let me know and I'll, I'll see what I can do to, uh, to pass them on. Um, in addition to the papers, we've had two Australian special reporters selected for 2022. Uh, Sarath Pereira is looking after preferential subject one and uh, Babak is looking after preferential subject three. So uh, really great representation from Australia uh, for the next Paris session coming up, which is, uh, which is great to see. 
So we had our C4 panel meeting uh, back in September. It was an online meeting again, unfortunately, due to uh, ongoing COVID restrictions. Uh, but nonetheless, it was uh, well attended. It was 29 members and invited guests uh, attended the, the admin meeting on the Monday. Uh, we review a number of things at that admin meeting, but a couple to mention here are uh, membership, uh, a regular membership of 28 uh, is in the process of being expanded to 32. So we're still seeing growth within the panel, which is which is great and very high level of interest in, uh, in the work of C4. Um, we've got really good industry diversity at present. Um, but poor gender diversity. Uh, so unfortunately, we've got no ladies on the panel uh, and it's something that we uh, are keen to see change. So uh, if you have um, female engineers uh, in your businesses and, uh, and they're keen to contribute to either working groups or the, the activities of, of C4, please make contact with us because uh, we, we'd love to see them involved. And, um, and contribute to the, the range of topics that we, uh, that we look at. Uh, we had a technical workshop on the Tuesday, so the day after, seven presentations this year, uh, a few examples there below. Uh, I won't bother reading them out, um, but needless to say, uh, it, it continues to amaze me even after the, the length of time that I've been involved in C4, just the, the range of experiences and the, the, the knowledge base that we've got within our panel um, and then the broader membership. Uh, it's, uh, it, it is quite amazing and you realise just how much of a, an asset it is to the, uh, to the Australian power industry. So um, yeah, thanks to all those that presented. Uh, it was a, a good couple of days and uh, certainly looking forward to next year. So I'm actually over time and out of time. Uh, so I just wanted to say thank you and uh, an au revoir. Um, this is my last report as the convener of C4. Uh, I'll be handing over immediately after this. Uh, the six years have gone quickly. It's been a most re rewarding and enjoyable experience. And uh, that's been in great part due to the, the exceptional people that I've been fortunate enough to, to interact with. Um, both here in Australia and uh, in internationally. Um, it's been a, a great opportunity to um, get to know a lot of people and uh, be involved in some, uh, in some amazing work. I'd like to make special mention to Terry Killen and Sally Earnshaw at the Brisbane office. Um, they've been very supportive uh, of, uh, of the C4 panel in organising activities and, and just supporting uh, me as, as convener. So thank you, Terry and Sally. Um, your work doesn't go unnoticed. I'd also like to say thanks to the Seagrow Australia Board for its commitment to supporting travel and, and the general involvement of Australian representatives in overseas activities. Uh, when you talk to other representatives from, from other countries, uh, they don't get the level of support that we do. Um, to, to travel and be involved and, uh, you know, I think we, we run the risk of taking it for granted if it's not called out. So uh, thank you to, uh, to the board and, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a great experience from, from my perspective. Uh, with that, I'll, uh, I'd like to introduce Babak Badzada. Um, many of you will know Babak, uh, he's taking over as convener uh, for the next six years. Uh, Babak's well established in C4 activities already, as you've probably noted from the, the number of things that he's already uh, um, working on, um, both locally and internationally. Uh, so I've got absolutely no doubts that the panel's in great hands going forward and, and will continue to deliver some, uh, some really good outcomes. So thanks for listening. Uh, happy to take any questions and uh, uh, thank you for um, the opportunity to have held this position. Um, talk to you all again soon. Thank you.